welcome to our basic first aid tips and tricks. At Deep Learning Academy, we are excited to welcome you to our short course. We're thrilled to have you join this enlightening journey designed to enrich your knowledge and skills in a concise yet impactful manner. Together, we'll make this a rewarding venture. Our first topic is choking. Imagine a colleague is choking. You ask them, are you choking? If they can talk, cough or breathe, they can try to cough up the obstruction. But if they can't, you need to act. Stand behind them, wrapping your arms around their waist. Position a clenched fist just above their navel, grasping the fist with your other hand. Quick upward thrusts are the key. This is called the Heimlich maneuver. For infants under a year old, their approach changes. Sit down and hold the infant face down on your forearm, supported by your thigh. Up to five back slaps between the baby's shoulder blades with the heel of your hand can help. If the object is not expelled, turn the infant over and give up to five chest thrusts on the middle of the breastbone. You repeat this until the obstruction is removed. Let's move on to head injuries. Assess responsiveness. Talk to the person to ensure they are conscious and breathing. If they're unresponsive, check for signs of breathing and a pulse. Do not move unless the person is in immediate danger, for example, in the middle of a road or near a fire, do not move them. Moving someone with a head injury can potentially cause more harm, especially if there's a spinal injury. Manage bleeding. If there's bleeding, apply a sterile cloth or bandage gently to the wind. Do not apply pressure if you suspect the skull may be fractured. Recovery position. If the person is unconscious, but breathing, place them in the recovery position. This helps maintain an open airway and allows fluids to drain from the mouth, preventing choking. Seek medical help. Always treat head injuries as serious. Call emergency services and seek medical attention immediately, even if the person seems fine initially. Some head injuries can have delayed symptoms. Remember, it's crucial to act swiftly and calmly in the event of a head injury and to always err on the side of caution. Burns are a common injury, and knowing how to handle them is crucial. For first-degree burns, call the burn under cold running water for at least 10 minutes and protect it with a non-stick bandage. Second-degree burns are similar, but remember not to pop any blisters. For third-degree burns, do not apply water, instead protect the area and call emergency services immediately. Fractures require steady hand. Keep the injured limb as still as possible. If the fractured bone is not visible, immobilize the area above and below the injury using splints. If the bone has broken through the skin, cover the wound with a sterile dressing. Seek medical attention immediately. The RICE method is a well-known and widely recommended initial treatment for sprains and strains. Here's a more detailed breakdown. Sprains. R stands for rest. Refrain from using the affected area to prevent further injury. If necessary, Use crutches or a brace to avoid putting weight on a sprained ankle or leg. I stands for eyes. Apply cold packs to the injured area immediately to reduce swelling and numb the pain. Never apply ice directly to the skin. Use a cloth or towel as a barrier. Apply ice for 15 to 20 minutes every 1 to 2 hours during the first 48 hours after the injury. C stands for compression. Use an elastic bandage like an AC wrap to help reduce swelling. Wrap it snugly, but not too tight, that it causes tingling or increased pain. E stands for elevate. Lift the injured area above the level of the heart whenever possible. This helps to reduce swelling by allowing fluids to drain away from the injured site. In addition to the rice method, over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen can help reduce pain and inflammation. However, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional before taking any medication. Also, if the pain or swelling does not improve after several days, or if you suspect a more serious injury, seek medical attention. CPR, adults. Safety first. Ensure the scene is safe for both you and the victim. Check for responsiveness. Tap the person gently and shout loudly, are you okay? Call for help. If the person is unresponsive, call emergency services immediately or ask someone else to do so. Open the airway. Tilt the person's head back slightly by lifting the chin with one hand and pushing down on the forehead with the other. Check for breathing. Look for chest movement, listen for breath sounds, and feel for breath on your cheek. 
If the person is not breathing or breathing abnormally, start chest compressions immediately. Chest compressions. Position the person flat on their back on a firm surface. Kneel next to the person's neck and shoulders. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the person's chest, between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first hand. Interlock your fingers. Keep your elbows straight and position your shoulders directly above your hands. Use your upper body weight to push down hard and fast, compressing the chest at least 2 inches deep. Aim for a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Rescue breaths. After 30 compressions, give 2 rescue breaths. Pinch the person's nose shut and cover their mouth with yours, making an airtight seal. Give one breath that makes the chest rise, then give a second breath. Continue CPR. Continue performing cycles of 30 compressions, followed by two rescue breaths. Do not stop CPR until the person starts to breathe or move, or when someone else can take over, or you are too exhausted to continue, or when emergency help arrives. Use of first aid equipment. Adhesive bandages. Clean the wound and apply the adhesive bandage over it. Tourniquets. Only use for severe bleeding when direct pressure doesn't stop the flow. Place 2 to 3 inches above the bleeding site and never over a joint and tighten until bleeding stops. Gauze and dressings. Clean the wound. Apply a dressing, then wrap with gauze to hold in place. Antiseptic wipes. Clean wounds or skin before applying a bandage. Splints. Keep broken or injured limbs immobile. Splints should be long enough to cover the joints above and below an injury. Thanks for watching. Contact us at Deep Learning Academy to discuss your first aid training needs.